I love new science. Even more, I love old science that resurfaces as new science with new evidence to really make it more powerful. And that's what I have today. Your levels of ketones are determined more than likely by your gut. This comes from just a wicked cool National Academy of Sciences study that really found the connection between what our microbiome looks like and how high our ketone levels can get. It is super wild. So we're gonna break it down because we understand that Yes, ketone levels will drive a lot of things, drive therapeutic results, they can drive body composition results, but what's really interesting is when we see that, wow, certain bacteria in our gut and certain things that we eat can drive those levels up higher over the long haul, not just individually, right? We all know if you have a little bit of MCT oil, your ketone levels can elevate, but did you know that hypothetically, maybe having some celery might actually be able to drive them up higher over the long haul. We're gonna break it all down. After this video, I want you to check out Natural Heaven Pasta, who I've talked about before. If you're doing a low carb or ketogenic diet, I think you'll really find them cool. When it comes down to pasta, they've got angel hair, they've got spaghetti, they've got lasagna noodles, but now they have brown and white rice. So they've really leveled it up. Really awesome company that is just making it cool if you're doing low carb to be able to still have some pasta and now rice. So recently I've been using it making tacos with like jicama tortillas and things. It's just awesome. So check them out down below. There's a special code that'll save you some cashola as well if you wanna use that down below. It's exclusively for people that watch my videos. So please don't share it. Just use it for yourself and your family. And they are a big supporter of this channel. So thank you Natural Heaven for continuing to make it possible down below in the description. So what this study did is it took a look at two groups of mice, right? Okay, and one group of mice, they had be germ-free. That means they didn't have a microbiome. They do this a lot just to kind of test different theories. The other group of mice were normal, like nothing unusual about them. They had both groups fast, okay? Now, they found that the group that didn't have the microbiome ended up not creating ketone levels nearly as high as the group that had the microbiome. Not a huge surprise, as we know there's some weird stuff going on there, but still interesting enough. But the further investigation is what gets really intriguing. What they decided to do is they decided to look at what are called PPAR knockout mice. Now, quick overview, PPAR is a receptor protein that is involved in the genetic coding for us to know how to use fats. If PPAR isn't on, then we don't know how to utilize fats properly. I would argue that pretty much all of you that are watching this video doing a keto protocol, your goal, whether you know it or not, is to drive up PPAR because that means you get fat adapted. That means you get the actual benefits long-term of the ketogenic protocol. So what we found here is when they take certain mice and they genetically knock out PPAR, making it non-existent, well, there's some interesting things. No surprise, the mice that did not have PPAR had lower ketone levels than the mice that did have PPAR. That's not a surprise. But when they looked at the mice that had the microbiome versus no microbiome, there was no difference with the PPAR knockout, meaning PPAR didn't have any effect on creating ketones between a microbiome or no microbiome. So without a microbiome, PPAR is kind of useless. That is really, really wild. And it, we dive in a little bit deeper. Check this out. What you can look at is that germ-free mice, naturally, like when they don't have a microbiome, they have very low levels of PPAR. You starting to connect the dots with me here? So no microbiome or low microbiome equals less PPAR seems to correlate directly with low levels of ketones. What the heck's going on here? So there is a connection and that's where it all makes sense. Okay, not having much of a microbiome seems to affect the PPAR and that affects our ketone levels, which affects your body composition, affects everything. So what do we do about it? Well, I have to explain a tad more, so stick with me. It comes down to the fact that your microbiome creates a byproduct. It's called acetate. Well, here's what happens. This acetate gets created and it goes along for a little ride and it heads over to your liver and it helps form something called acetyl coenzyme A. Acetate, acetyl, you see the similarity there? Acetyl coenzyme A. Well, if you have a little bit of molecular biology understanding or biochemistry, acetyl coenzyme A 
converts into ketones. It will, it will create ketones. It's needed for ketones. Whoa! So less microbiome equals less short-chain fatty acids, less acetate, less acetyl coenzyme A, less ketones, less benefit. <laughs> what? So what do we do about this? Well, I mean, I guess the short answer is we have to increase our microbiome somehow. Probiotics, fiber, prebiotic fiber, taking good conscious care of it, okay? Probiotics taken not with food, okay? Take them on their own. Take them before a meal so they have a chance to colonize the best that they possibly can without getting sitting in the gut biome and sitting in that hostile like environment for a while with a lot of hydrochloric acid. That is critical. Then when it also comes down to the fibers that you consume, soluble fiber on keto. So all the people out there that say, oh, don't have a tablespoon of flax or don't have a tablespoon of chia because there's some omega-6s or there's some just estrogenic compounds. What you get out of the diversity of the microbiome and how it communicates with PPAR and how it converts into ketones far supersedes that little smidge of potential estrogenic effect. I can almost guarantee you that having a sip out of a plastic water bottle, which we all do, myself included, is probably a bigger negative impact than having a tablespoon of chia, okay? Because that chia and flax can help you out. So that should be a big part of your diet on keto, okay? If you're doing carnivore, different situation. But other kinds of soluble fiber, which I talk about all the time, are going to be very important. The long and the short of it is the microbiome and the short chain fatty acids are a strong agonist for PPAR. If you want to get more fat adapted, if you want more out of keto, then you need to be leveling up your PPAR. And I talk about different ways of doing that with green tea and this and that and exercise and fasting and this, but I would honestly say that the biggest lever you can pull is taking care of your microbiome. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.